Good morning. I hereby call to order this 16th meeting of the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission for the year 2019 and ask that you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Um, just want a quick note of acknowledging our special guest today. We have a new commissioner that will be coming on board, so we want to acknowledge Commissioner Ralph Yonora and his family that is here with him, his wife Carmela, and his daughter Christina. And as you may or may not know, he will be sworn in after our public meeting today, so we do ask people to stay after that. Also want to make sure that you note the safety information that's on the inside of today's agenda. Also note that the commission will act on various matters at today's meeting, which is open to the public. However, since adequate forums have been made available for public participation in cases before the commission, there is no opportunity for the public to address the commission at this public meeting. So our first matter on today's agenda is the <coughs> approval of the minutes for September 19th, and I call upon Vice Chairman Sweet, who is the editor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I've reviewed the minutes of the public meeting of September 19th, 2019, and move they be approved as submitted. You have heard the motion of Vice Chairman Sweet. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Place. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Now I will call on our Secretary Rosemary Chiavetta to lead us through this morning's agenda. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Your various bureaus and offices have prepared the following agenda items for your consideration. Therefore, let us begin on page one with the recommendation of Director Monahan and the Bureau of Audits that the Commission release the annual <coughs> report for fiscal year 2018 through 2019 to the public. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion? I do have a comment that I will place on the record in its entirety. Today, the Commission releases the annual report detailing the results of its management audits and management efficiency investigations over the 12-month period ending June 30th, 2019. As I have stated before, the Bureau of Audits represents the Commission's front line in economic regulation, assuring that utilities operations are compliant with Commission directives while also evaluating operations for increased efficiency. The annual report released today exhibits this hard work. In summary, during the 2018-2019 fiscal year, the Bureau completed MIEs for six utilities. These MIEs resulted in the development of 98 recommendations, which are projected to manifest an annual savings and benefit and valued at $2.6 million. I would like to take the time to commend our Bureau of Audits for their work that has been done on uh, this uh, annual report. Uh, they have done an excellent job. I just want to congratulate them as well as their director, Kelly Monahan. Any other further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> the motion passed four to zero. Turning to page two, and matters presented by Director Sophie in the Office of Special Assistance, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the proposed opinion and order in the complaint of Center Park Historic District and the City of Reading versus UGI Utilities. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Place, second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> the motion passes four to zero. It is recommended that the Commission adopt the proposed opinion and order in the complaint of John Peoples versus Lyft. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion? 
I will say under the discussion, I do have a motion, so I, I will ask that Vice Chairman Sweet preside. I, I'm always pushing this over towards him. I'm going to leave it right here. Uh, I wouldn't I dare take it. <laughs> I would ask that Vice you Chairman Sweet. swing that thing too hard. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, you're recognized for the purposes of offering your motion. Thank you very much. I ask that my motion be spread upon a record as if I read it in its entirety. On March 13, 2018, John F. Peoples filed a formal complaint against Lyft, Inc., which alleged that his account was improperly deactivated due to his comments about non-English speaking drivers. During the scheduled hearing, Mr. Peoples' counsel amended the com complaint to add a claim of discrimination, alleging that Lyft deactivated the complainant's account because he was blind. Mr. Peoples testified that Lyft drivers have driven away from him on several occasions. However, Mr. Peoples did not produce any empirical records to substantiate his claims. In the initial decision, the ALJ determined that Lyft deactivated Mr. Peoples from the platform, not because he was blind, but because the complainant's continue, continuing rude, harassing, and racist, racist behavior, which is a violation of Lyft's Term of service, terms of service. I agree with the ALJ's determination that the complainant did not present evidence to establish that Lyft discriminated against him due to his disability. Meanwhile, the complainant's own testimony regarding the opinions he voiced about the driver's nationalities and the way in which those opinions may have been viewed by the drivers provided a logical explanation regarding the account deactivation. Therefore, I move that, one, the ALJ's initial decision be sustained, two, the exceptions by the complainant be denied, and three, the Office of Special Assistance draft an opinion and order consistent with this motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there a second? Second. Uh, it has been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, seeing none, the motion carries four to zero. Uh, is it acceptable to use the same vote uh, on the matter as amended? Uh, seeing acquiescence in that, the, um, the motion as amended, or the matter as amended by the motion is now adopted again four to zero. And Madam Chair, back to you. Thank you very much. Turning to page three. It is recommended that the commission adopt the proposed opinion and order in the complaint of Tony O'Quinn versus the Pico Energy Company. Is there a motion to adopt a staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, motion by Vice Chairman Sweet, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. It is recommended that the commission adopt the proposed opinion and order in the application of Aqua Pennsylvania Wastewater regarding the initial decision of Administrative Law Judge Jones and subsequent exceptions. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Sweet, second by Commissioner Place. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Turning to page four, it is recommended that the commission adopt the proposed opinion and order in the application of Aqua Pennsylvania wastewater regarding the recommended decision of administrative law judge Jones and subsequent exceptions filed. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Sweet, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Chairman, I have a motion on this matter. Commissioner Coleman. Thank you. I'd ask that my motion be entered in the record as though I read it in its entirety. Before the Public Utility Commission for consideration and disposition is the application for the acquisition of the wastewater system assets of Chellenham Township by Aqua Pennsylvania Wastewater, Inc. Aqua also seeks approval of the rate making rate base and a number of contracts between it and Chellenham. As part of the filing requirements, Aqua and Chellenham engaged utility valuation experts to perform fair market value analyses of the system in accordance with the uniform standards of professional appraisal practice. The two valuations resulted in the average fair market value of $51.7 million, which is higher than the purchase price of $50 million too. 
So the rate making base was proposed to be set at the purchase price. Administrative law judge Angela Jones issued a recommended decision on August 14, 2019, recommending approval of the application subject to certain conditions. The ALJ recommended accepting the valuation performed by Gannett Fleming Valuation and Rate Consultants, LLC, but recommended adjusting the valuation of AUS Consultants, Inc. ALJ Jones accepted adjustments to AUS valuation as recommended by the Office of Consumer Advocate concerning the service lives of mains, laterals, and manholes, a correction in the in-service date of the CCTV truck, and the inclusion of all Section 1329 acquisitions in the proxy group of the market approach and the use of a simple average. The results of the adjustments recommended by the ALJ result in a rate-making base value of $44.5 million. The ALJ also concluded that Aqua met its burden to show that it was fit to acquire Cheltenham in the service of its customers. The ALJ also recommended approval of the nine contracts entered into between Aqua and Cheltenham, finding that Aqua had met its burden to show that all reasonable, legal, and valid. An applicant must show by the preponderance of evidence that the acquisition is made in the public interest as it will result in affirmative public benefit. The ALJ accepted that Cheltenham will become part of a larger system when realize certain operating efficiencies as a result of consolidation. The ALJ accepted that Aqua will be acquiring the system at the rate cost per customer of $4,920, which is less than Aqua's current rate base per customer of $7,650. The ALJ recommended approval of the stipulation entered into by Aqua and the Bureau of Investigation Enforcement. The stipulation requires that Aqua to undertake an assessment of its infrastructure, a leak assessment, and a study of the infiltration and inflow issues and share those results with INE and the OCA. Aqua also agreed to certain cost containment measures and will file a cost of service study in the next rate case. The record relied on the ALJ's demonstration that Cheltenham Township wastewater system had had chronic high flow and infiltration and sanitary sewer overflows over the past 19 years. It had had several corrective action plans with the Department of Environmental Protection, and the most recent of which was approved in April 19th, 2017. In the order to address the high inflow in infiltration and sanitary sewer overflows, Aqua has committed to adopting Cheltenham's corrective action plan approved by the DEP. Aqua also plans to address ongoing compliance issues by evaluating historic flows, monitoring information, and by developing plans that can efficiently achieve the most impact in the shortest amount of time. Aqua has estimated that it will take 10 years to bring the system into compliance. The ALJ therefore concluded that based on these and other findings made in the recommended decision, the transaction was in the public interest and resulted in affirmative public benefits. Exceptions to the recommended decision were filed by several parties, primarily on the valuation of the Cheltenham system and in the process. In conclusion, I agree that the acquisition has, has been shown to support the Commission's goal of consolidating wastewater, water and wastewater industry that through the regionalization of water and wastewater systems will allow water and wastewater industry to achieve greater economies of scale. Aqua has proven that it has technically, legally, and financially fit to acquire the system and has demonstrated through the various commitments that the acquisition is in the affirmative <coughs> public benefit. Therefore, I move that the recommended decision of Administrative Law Judge Angela T. Jones be adopted as modified by OSA Exception 1 and the Office of Special Assistance prepare an opinion in order consistent with this motion. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Is there a second to the motion? Uh, second. Second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion on the motion? Yes, I have a statement on the matter. <clears throat> Chairman, I mean, <laughs> Commissioner Place. I'm going to give you the gavel down there. Commissioner Place. All right. Um, Madam Secretary, I ask that my statement be placed in the record as if I had read it in its entirety. Before us, as noted for disposition, is the recommended decision of Administrative Law Judge Angela T. Jones and the related exceptions and reply exceptions that have been submitted in this proceeding by various parties. I appreciate the work that has been done by AOJ Jones, the participating parties, and the staff for analyzing one more litigated case that involves complex Section 1329 valuation issues within the very tight six-month time frame. 
I'm not, however, convinced that the acquisition of the Cheltenham Township wastewater assets by Aqua Pennsylvania Wastewater provides affirmative benefits that outweigh the costs of the rate-making effects that this acquisition will potentially cause, especially for the existing ratepayers of Aqua's water and wastewater services. In addition, I disagree with how certain valuation methodologies have been applied in establishing the fair value of the acquired assets. I seriously question the 50.25 million acquisition price for the acquired assets that have an original cost value of only 15.41 million. The offer of an acquisition price of 50.25 million for a wastewater system where ACA will commit a further 54.8 million of additional upgrades and improvements over a 10 year period is counterintuitive and the acquisition <coughs> premium of 34.84 million is 226% above the original cost of the acquired system. Similarly, the fair value figure of 44.56 million that will be used in the future of, for Aqua's rate-based addition and for regulatory rate-making purposes produces an acquisition premium of 29.15 million, or 189%, over the original cost figure of 15.41 million. Such high acquisition premiums generate substantial future revenue requirement and rate-making effects both for the Cheltenham system consumers, but also notably for the existing ratepayers of Aqua's water and wastewater services. Since the acquired system is in need of upgrades and improvements, additional revenue requirements and rate making effects will arise from the additional 54.8 million that Aqua intends to invest. Hopefully that's not too echoey, it sounds loud up here. <clears throat> In short, the public interest is not served by socializing the revenue requirement costs of a 44.56 million acquisition, which contains, as I noted, substantial premium, and those associated with the future 54.8 million in capital investments. These future revenue requirements substantially outweigh the acquisition potential and insufficiently quantified benefits for the transaction does not meet the applicable net benefits test under statutory law and relevant court decisions. I also disagree on how certain methodologies were applied in the valuation of the acquired assets, especially under the income approach. I believe that the Office of Consumer Advocate has presented credible evidentiary testimony that justifies its proposed adjustments to the estimates that were reached by the utility valuation experts from AUS and Gannett Fleming. I do not think that an income approach analysis can start with a beginning planned investment of the acquired assets that is based on anything else but original cost for the estimation of future revenues and earnings. Similarly, the OCA testimony clearly demonstrated that certain assumptions of the AUS and Gannett Fleming estimates lack solid foundation when accounting for the future revenue and earnings streams of the terminal values of the assets at issue. Simply put, an asset that is depleted through a depreciation expense cannot generate revenues and earnings if periodic capital investment expenditures do not exceed these depreciation expenses. Furthermore, I find OCA testimony credible and persuasive on the use of calculations and va variable values that comply with commonly accepted public utility regulation parameters in the income approach analysis. The calculation of appropriate cost of capital and rate of return figures depends on the selection of appropriate capital structure components and corresponding cost rates that are suitable for assets that will operate under the jurisdiction and future rate making parameters of this commission. Thus, I agree with the OCA's use of a capital structure that consists of 45% in long-term debt and 55% in common equity capital with an associated cost of common equity capital of 9.95%. For these reasons, I believe that OCA's exception number two should be granted. The relevant outcome would have produced a more rational valuation figure for the acquired assets and would have preserved OCA's sound methodology parameters within the income approach valuation analysis. Since this transaction does not meet the net public benefits test, it should not be approved. I note that municipal water and wastewater system acquisitions under section 1329 of the Public Utility Code will inevitably contain acquisition premiums because of the statutorily mandated fair value estimation methods. However, such acquisition premiums should be kept within a zone of reasonableness 
and the estimation methods should follow applicable and well-established principles of public utility regulation. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Place. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the vote on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. <clears throat> motion passes three to one, noting the dissent of Commissioner Place. On the matter as amended, are we uh, uh, okay with taking the previous roll call? Yes. Seeing no objection, the matter as amended, we'll go with the previous roll call, noting the dissent of Commissioner Place. Turning to page five, in matters presented by Director Diskin and the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the proposed tentative order regarding the license cancellations of certain electric generation suppliers. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Place, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. It is recommended that the commission adopt the proposed order in the application of Affinity PA LLC. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner mm -hmm. Coleman, second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion? I do have some comments to place on the record. This petition to discontinue service triggered the need for an emergency motion issued by me and approved by the Commission to prevent the unilateral termination of service to schools, libraries, universities, hospitals, and legislative staff offices. We urge the parties to use the Commission's mediation resources. We also published notice of the petition in the Pennsylvania, Public, uh, Pennsylvania Bulletin and required the company to notify their consumers. As a result, the parties filed a certificate of satis satisfaction. The consumers have stated that they have a, a unilateral, an alternative, excuse me, service, service provider, and the OCA has withdrawn their complaint as well. So I'm happy to support granting this request under these circumstances, consistent with our ongoing obligation to make sure that consumers have alternative providers if their provider wants to leave the market. Any further comments or discussion on the case? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Turning to page six, it is recommended that the commission adopt in an omnibus motion all of the items on page six, beginning with the petition of the Pennsylvania Electric Company and continuing to include all of the items on page seven, all of the items on page eight, all of the items on page 9, all of the items on page 10, and finally, including the first two items on page 11, ending <clears throat> with the application of U.S. Energy Solutions of New Jersey. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion <clears throat> by Vice Chairman Sweet, second by Commissioner Place. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. And the last item on page 11, it is recommended that the commission adopt the proposed order in the application of Pico Energy Company's electric division. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Place, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Is that a statement on the matter? Commissioner Place. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, I ask that I, my statement be placed in the records if I'd read it in its entirety. For the Commission for consideration is the letter of notification of Pico Energy Company for approval to construct a 230 kV transmission line tap from the existing Parish Balakinwood 230 kV transmission line to the Upland substation in Philadelphia. While I support the approval of this lawn and construction of the line tap, accounting treatment and cost recovery for this project has yet to be addressed. More specifically, I encourage the statutory advocates, the Bureau of Investigation and Enforcement, and other affected parties to closely scrutinize the costs of this project. PICO has established the cost of this project to be $7.1 million for this 0.6-mile double-circuit tap line. Material costs for the eight poles, appurtenances, and conductors are expected to be less than $1 million, with labor costs representing the remainder of the project's costs. While it is asserted that the construction on and around an active SEPTA rail line will impose added costs, these costs bear further scrutiny. 
I ask parties to explore whether such costs are justified and ask the company to work with SEPTA and the City of Philadelphia to mitigate these high labor costs where possible while ensuring the safety of its workers. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Place. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Turning to page 12, and matters presented by Chief Counsel Hicks and the Law Bureau. It is recommended in an omnibus motion that the Commission adopt both items on page 12, beginning with the petition of National Fuel Gas and ending with the policy statement rescission regarding motor carriers in Allegheny County. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendations? So moved. moved. Second. Motion by <clears throat> Commissioner Play, second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Turning to page 13 in matters presented by Chief ALJ Rainey and the Office of Administrative Law Judge. It should be noted that the first item, Jerome Sindaco versus PPL, has been postponed to the public meeting of November 14th. Continuing on page 13, it is recommended that the Commission adopt ALJ Buckley's recommended decision in the joint application of Aqua Pennsylvania and the Borough of Phoenixville. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Coleman, second by Vice Chairman Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Turning to page 14, it should be noted that the first item, Carl Lasserre versus the Metropolitan Edison Company, has also been postponed until the public meeting of November 14th. And finally, it is recommended that the Commission adopt ALJ Meyer's recommended decision in the PUC, OCA, and OSBA complaints versus UGI utilities. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Place, second by Vice Chairman <clears throat> Sweet. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Madam Chairman, that concludes the regular agenda. Turning to the carry-in agenda. Beginning on page one of the carry-in, it is recommended by the Office of Special Assistance that the Commission adopt in an omnibus motion, starting with the single item on page one, William Lamack versus Pike County Light and Power, and continuing to include both, both items on page two of the carry-in, and ending with the single item on page three of the carry-in regarding the petition for reconsideration filed by River Oaks Energy. Is there a motion to adopt staff recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Place, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. Turning to page four of the carry-in agenda, it is recommended by the Bureau of Technical Utility Services that the Commission adopt the supplemental tariff of Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania. Is there a motion to adopt the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Vice Chairman Sweet, <laughs> second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes four to zero. And finally, it should be noted that the last item on page four has been postponed until the public meeting of November 14th. Madam Chairman and Commissioners, that concludes all agenda items to be considered today. Thank you very much. Before we gavel out, we just want to take this opportunity. As you know, as the chair, I have many statutory uh, appointments that I can designate certain individuals within the commission to serve as my designee. We have, in the last year and a half, almost two years, taking, taken over the uh, enforcement jurisdiction for one call under Act 50 of 2017, and in that statute, I have the opportunity to serve or ser have a designee. And so I, we wanted to highlight this appointment because it's an important one, and we want to take the opportunity to do it today in our public meeting. So I am happy to announce the appointment of Terry Cooper-Smith to the role of Chair of the Damage Prevention Committee. The focus of the Damage Prevention Committee is to reduce the number of hits on underground lines and utilities. It meets the 
It meets regularly to review alleged violations of Pennsylvania's Underground Utility Line Protection Act, also known as the One Call Law, or Act 50 of 2017. Ms. Cooper Smith's industry experience and understanding of the enforcement of Pennsylvania's One Call Law makes her a strong choice for this position. She is a senior pipeline safety engineer in the PUC's Bureau of Investigation and Enforcement's Safety Division and is certified by the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, or PHMSA, as a lead inspector in numerous areas of pipeline safety. In addition, Ms. Cooper Smith was instrumental in the development of the Pennsylvania STEAM regulations that went into effect in 2018. She was also named as the Engineer of the Year for the Safety Division at the annual safety conference held in 2017 and is a nationally recognized safety engineer with a degree in civil engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She resides in the Philadelphia area, but is here with us today to celebrate this appointment. So I do please ask her to stand and join me in congratulating her as my designated chair. Thank you very much, Terry. We know you will do an excellent job. So for now, our public meeting, we will adjourn our public meeting as, as I stated before when we started in the beginning, we do have the swearing in of our new commissioner, so we do ask that ple people stay behind after we gavel out for the swearing in. If there is no objection, our meeting is adjourned.